Hey there, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another episode of Tidbits from the Road. I am your host, DJ Harbaugh, and wanted to come to you on this one because of a little something that happened here not that long ago, and that is the release of uh, Car and Driver's 10 Best Cars for 2019. Um, you know, I, I've tweeted this already, and it just really chafes at me whenever I see these lists and you know I'll see the list I'll I'll go to the list and I'm gonna and I already know what's gonna happen when I see the list and go to the list but I do it anyhow and that is the Model 3 is inexplicably absent from the list now then I think to myself well self maybe there's something about this particular list that would have excluded the Model 3 Um, maybe they flat out just don't consider electric cars. I didn't see that in this one. Uh, or maybe there's something else excluding it. So I go to the I go to the article and I read the article and I see what's on the list. And mind you, the cars listed are fun cars, even if gas powered. And so I look very hard at the list and I don't see anything in the list that would exclude the Model 3, and then I get angry, and I just, just, I gotta stop looking at these lists, but the the purpose of this particular uh, episode is more about these, these publications that produce these lists, so pretty famously last year, uh, not Car and Driver, but Motor Trend uh, had their car of the year down to, I believe the Model 3 was a finalist, at least it got that far, um, but the Alfa Romeo Giulia ended up winning the the prize of Motor or yeah Motor Trends Car of the Year. Now I, I gotta think if the Performance Model Three had been available, then maybe it would have won. But frankly, even the Model Three as it existed for them to review, performance wise, should have been able to to just lambaste a Giulia. I digress. So, I, I get um, I get a lot of feedback when I've posted a few of these things, and, and two things come up when I when I get this feedback. The first uh, and most common, and I'll, I'm going to dispel this, at least what I believe, right away as a possibility, and that is, oh, Tesla doesn't advertise, so you're not they're never going to win an award in one of these magazines. Um. I'm just going to say this, you know, sometimes there are conspiracies out there and they're, they are legitimate. I just don't think this is one. Um, frankly, in public hate, now granted, this is not Car and Driver, Motor Trend, you know, these are magazines, these are not necessarily bastions of journalistic integrity, but typically in these type of situations, the marketing department is over here and the editorial department is over here and twain shall they ever meet. Um, so I, I really, truly, honestly, and maybe I'm just too good at too much giving the benefit of the doubt, believe, I don't believe that that is what's happening here. Um, the other thing that I get is... Uh, And what I really want to speak more to is, well, you know, these are just, you know, dyed in the wool Petro heads. And that's why, uh, why they're never going to give the Model 3 or Tesla their due. And to that, I say, well, the magazines and outlets that I have seen and omitting the Model 3 for contention for their car of the year or their top cars of the year it's not like this is like Mopar Muscle or or Chevy Times or, or anything like that. These are general car enthusiast magazines. And I would submit to you that if they are truly excluding electrics because go gas, then they are doing their readers an utter disservice. Uh, because as we all know, the performance of an electric vehicle, 10 times out of 10 with a caveat, beats a petrol car every single time. Ten times, I just said that, 10 times out of 10. 
Uh, the caveat to that, obviously, at least for now, until technology gets a little better where a transmission can actually stand the torque of an electric motor, is on the top end, clearly electric cars have a problem because, well, at least Teslas have a problem because there is no transmission. Uh, you go as fast as that motor can spin. There's no way of kind of gearing that power up at least right now. They tried, they really tried with, with the Roadster. That didn't go so well. And ever since then, Teslas have been uh, single drive. So yeah, back to the point, you know, if you're, if you're putting yourself out there as a, as a car magazine, not a gas powered car magazine or a Chevy magazine or a Ford magazine or a Dodge magazine, a car magazine or outlet, I should say, uh, cause increasingly everything's online, you are failing your readers if you are not properly in giving electric vehicles the consideration they deserve. Because frankly, electric vehicles are coming, they are better, and while I am not, you know, I'm one of the folks that will not be quick to discount people's range anxiety fears, but that's not long for this world. Actually, I don't know if you can see right behind me. There is actually a Model 3 right behind me right now, a silver Model 3. Um, the more that these things get on the road, the more common they are, the better the tech is going to get. And eventually, this is truly not going to be a problem. Uh, I just left a supercharger uh, the, and was talking with a couple owners. And in the time, you know, I'm not going too far further from the supercharger. In the time it took me to talk a couple times with the owners, uh, or a little bit with the owners, go use the restroom and come back. The car was ready to go for me. Um, and that's, that's the future. You know, it's, it didn't impact my trip. You know, I, I, I did everything I wanted. I was not waiting on the car and granted a little bit extenuating circumstance and talking with some folks that, you know, some very kind strangers, uh, and then having used the restroom. But isn't that what a road trip is? You take a, a quick break and get on the road. That's exactly what I just did. And it didn't take me more than 20 minutes to, to complete all that. So that's where it's really burning at me that it just seems like the, you know, we, we as fans of Tesla are the fringe and we're, some of us are a little rabid and may, and may give a bit of a, a negative uh, in impression to the outside world. Uh, but I think 99.9% .9 of us mean well, uh, in our, in our fervor, but we're kind of seen as a cult rather than what we should be seen as, as the early adopters for the technology that will win. So with that in mind, uh, I thought to myself again, self, you haven't actually driven a model three. Maybe you should Go actually do that before you declare what you did earlier on Twitter, which is Model 3 may well be the most important car since the Model T. I believe that to be true. And I'm going to go drive one right now with the help of a Twitter friend. And uh, I'm just going to get to see what that performance Model 3 can do. So stick with me. And after this little transition break here, it should be me and a friend in a Model 3 performance. All right, folks, so remember that friend I said that uh, I was gonna go visit? We're here, and this is his performance Model 3 behind us. We're gonna go take a drive and chat a little bit about his experience picking it up and what he's uh, had to go through since he's had it, and that's about it, so ready to go? Let's do it. All right, let's do it. This is a different experience, so in the S, you have that that nice wind that winds up whenever you, whenever you kind of hit it a little bit, and this is you don't hear anything. No, so here, we'll, even if so, you get a little bit of high pitch from the rear. I but that's if it. you hadn't said anything, I would have not really understood what that was. Yep. But I, it's like that kind that electric sound, not yep. the, not the wine that you get out of the S, but like yep. you can hear like the juice flowing almost literally. Yep. Especially if you have you ever heard of P eighty five. Uh, no, I'm not. Oh man, it has a really distinct. Uh, it's audible for sure, but it's. I, I think if you talk to anybody who owns a P85, it's it's almost like endearing. They they look at it as like a a cool quirk of the the P85. 
hour train, so it's pretty neat. But the exact opposite of this, it's very quiet. Yeah, mine, you know, mine's not a P, but it's an 85D, and it's got a very distinct yep. kind of sound to it. Yep. It's almost like the Roadster, the original Roadster, but take it down like four notches yeah, yeah, yeah. Is, is what it reminds me of. Yep. I've only seen the Roadster in videos as far as what that sound sounds like, because I literally can't fit in one. Which, oh, I didn't even think which, about that. <laughs> on that note, yeah. I didn't have to adjust the seat. I didn't have to do anything. Yep. And I'm six foot four, sitting in this absolutely comfortably. So that's f phenomenal. Yeah. And you could, I'm sure you could even pull the seat back a little bit if you wanted. Yeah, there was more room on it. Yeah, I'm comfy the way it is. So. So it's somewhat interesting. I found with the so I have 18 inch TST wheels from T Sportline. Yep. That's what I got for my winter wheels or winter tires. And, Thank um, you for being a, uh, a, a show super patron there, T-Sport Line. Appreciate yeah. that. And um, so the wheels are great. They came um, pre-milled for the performance hubs because they have that little three millimeter yep. uh, a lip and bolted right in, no problem. Um, so that was great. The whole, they had them pre-balanced, uh, pre-mounted, all that fun stuff. Um, but what I noticed is once the, the car recalibrated, because, uh, you know, it picks up the new yeah. TPMS, um, it was off by about two miles an hour. So freeway speeds, if I'm doing 65, if the car says I'm doing 65, I'm really doing 63. So it's a... Uh... Mm. Well, I thought, uh, so someone, because I noticed the same thing. So my, the black view always shows me going slower than what the car says. Someone explained that to me as the cars are actually set to show you a lower speed than what you're, or a higher speed than what you're actually doing. Oh. So that cops... Yo, it's keeping you within tolerances sure. or whatever. I mean, so I don't sense. know. I don't know if I was being BS'd or, <laughs> or what there, but that, that's the explanation I got because I actually made that comment. Like, yeah, it's really weird. The 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 black view, even though it's GPS, you know, sensing, it should be yep. pretty dead on. Yep. Yep. It's always like one or two miles an hour below what I think I'm going. Yeah. So I just set it for two over, but I'm just like you. I don't. I don't. I don't mess around with doing 90 and a 65. Or all right, so what we'll do, um, we'll do autopilot like normal, right? So in your car, you right, on so the you left-hand side. Right, so you got the double down yep. there. Model 3, it's all integrated into the, the shift indicator here. So two down, and then with Navigate on autopilot, it's got this cool new chime. Oh, the yeah. third chime. Fancy, <laughs> right? So you got the the five wide lanes there. That's pretty, pretty yeah. interesting. That, that came with the nav on autopilot update, too, I saw. Yep. I think someone actually showed that they were seeing a seven at one point. Yeah, that's, uh, that's pretty cool. I, I'm curious though, and I mean, maybe some of some of your listeners would, would be able to chime in with this too, but I'm curious if people use this display for anything. So me personally, I do. Uh, just, I, I'm, and granted I have the, the, the binnacle instead of the center screen, but you know, I'm constantly watching because even as awesome as I believe autopilot to be, I still don't trust it further than I can throw it. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, just like you've got your hand down here, you know, I have my claw grip that I like to use. Yep. And I have that on, and I'm constantly glancing down to see what, what the car sees. <laughs> uh, so I love the, uh, and actually with nav on autopilot with the, um, with the blue line going through there to show you what the car is going to do or what it believes it should do, yep. that even more to me says is a reason to be, to be looking at it. Yep. So here's an interesting human versus autopilot decision, right? Like if I'm driving, yep. I'm going to get over one lane because I don't want to deal with uh, this the on-ramp on -ramp here, but the car doesn't know to do that. So do you have do you have this set, what, what's your sensitivity set to for nav on autopilot? Do you have it in Mad Max? I, I do have it in Mad Max, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I absolutely do. So we'll see. I haven't quite figured out what the threshold is for set speed versus actual speed for it to make that decision to say, hey, I better, you know, I better get over left, I better get over right. It can, if you saw that gray line, it tells you where it thinks it needs to go. Right. So it's, um, it wants me to get over, so I'm going to indicate, make sure myself, good. It's going to slow down to get behind this Maserati. There we go. So here it's doing all that by itself. Oh, uh, cool. Kind of aggressively. Yeah, I was gonna say that was. <laughs> but yeah, that's not what I'm used to, man. It did that all by itself. 
turn signal and everything. But uh, all right, so tell me about uh, when when you got this thing because you know the performance. Uh, that's kind of a special delivery there. Oh yes, sir, it was. Especially after two and a half years of, uh, of waiting. So this all started back, you know, the infamous day, March thirty first, twenty sixteen. Good, bad, or otherwise, I decided that I was going to be first in line here in Columbus, Ohio at the location. And um, I went the night before, uh, camped out, right? Brought my sleeping bag, brought a comfortable chair, nice. some snacks, all that fun stuff. And that was a blast. That was an absolute blast. How many were in line with you? Uh, I would say probably 15 to 20 that stayed overnight. Um, and then once we got about 6 a.m. that next day, you know, remembering that 10 is when they started the 10 a.m. is when I started taking reservations by the time they opened the doors probably three to four hundred wow which you know out west maybe not such a big deal but for here in the good old midwest in Ohio is a it was awesome they had news crews out there uh, it was a lot of a lot of fun a lot of hype uh, it was really neat uh, so that was back then you know then we wait we wait we wait we wait all of us have the waited. interminable wait yes absolutely and um, I, I was, uh, got my invite to configure, um, I think it was May when lots of people did, there was a huge, uh, a huge invite wave went out. And at the time though, I had chosen all wheel drive. Right, because um, at the time, all wheel drive and performance were not to be seen. Yes. And I remember I, I messaged you actually when I said, yo, congrats on, on getting your getting your invite. Yep. And you told me, well, it's a little anticlimactic. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> then you go through the whole process. I'm sure everybody out there who's gone through this as well, you, you see it, you get excited, you go in, you pick all your options, you hit submit, you lose $2,500, <laughs> and then you submit. And now we start to wait again. But, um, but back then was when the, the performance version was still way more expensive. Um, you know, you could get up to, I think, eighty six dollars or $87,000. Um, I wasn't particularly interested in spending that amount, so I went with all-wheel drive, more efficient. You know, back then we thought that all-wheel drive would be even more efficient than rear, right. which we've since learned is not the case. Um, but I was happy with that. I got red, got the aero wheels, because I really like the look of the wheels without the aero covers on them. Um, got full self-driving. Yeah, actually, you mentioned that I, if I were to order one today, I'd probably do the same thing, yep. just because... The, the bigger 19s and actually on this it's a 20 if, it they, if they install that yep. uh, so that rubber is not cheap nope. uh, so <laughs> and the the arrows without the the covers on them I think are fine looking wheels oh yeah they look great absolutely absolutely so I was I was dead set on that I was, I was happy as could be um, and then uh, I guess maybe a month or two later is when we found out that they had that big price decrease on the performance and I I was lucky enough I, I tweeted at at Elon and was like hey you know, my, my order's locked in, but can I, can, can we change? You know, I'd like to upgrade and take advantage of this. And he, he responded, it was awesome. Uh, <laughs> you got to have the lovely pleasure of an Elon response yes. and your phone melting afterwards. Exactly right. And I don't even have a blue check next to my name on Twitter, right? So right. It was, it was pretty cool. Neither did I. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't know how that happened. Yeah. But, it was, um, you know, of course he confirmed that, yes, we'll open it back up and let people upgrade. So I decided at that point to do it uh, to the performance. So you had confirmed your order at that point. Yep. Confirmed. They took my money. You know, all that stuff was done, um, and they let me change it without without a penalty. So no, no. Um, I think it's like five hundred bucks. Yeah, know. yeah, yeah. So then waited some I'm more. I'm sure they would like to have more of your money. Yes, yes. <laughs> and, you know, they'd be crazy not to, right? It was another. I forget what the upgrade was, but um, I probably I think it was like fifteen G to go from AWD to, uh, yeah. to performance. Yeah, it was a decent amount, but. Um, I judge if you know we're gonna humans are great at rationalizing and I convince myself that, <laughs> that this is you know I've waited long enough and that um, this is what I this is what I really want and it's worth it and all that fun stuff. So how was how was the other half on that? Because mine was surprisingly receptive to, to dropping this kind of money. Yeah. Uh, how about you? She she was okay. Um, mainly because I had waited and I had saved and you know if it had just been an impulse like we walked into a a Mercedes dealership and I was going to buy a, you know, a S class or something, right. she probably would have been less enthused about it, <laughs> but she's, she's fairly on board with the, uh, the whole transition to, you know, sustainable transport and, and whatever. She drives a Model S herself. So she's, she understands, she gets it. And, um, so we, uh, yeah, we did that. And, um, it was about, let's see, I guess September is when I got the, uh, very first of September is when I found out that the car was in route. 
Uh, I got a call from my in sale inside uh, delivery advisor or sales advisor and um, they set a schedule now it's real right that's when you get that email from them yeah that's when the reality <laughs> really sets in right um, and I uh, lucked out uh, I was I had my financing all set um, I had a, a spot at a detailer here in Columbus that they were gonna take it right after I picked up the car to you know paint correction wrap all that fun stuff which I highly recommend it was worth every penny and I will add on to that too I did not do any of that and I really regret not doing any <laughs> of that so yes definitely find yourself a good detailer folks. yes 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 uh, pad your budget just a little bit if you're able um, even if you're not able to do a full wrap the front uh, I did the front half of the car which was yep. completely worth it yeah I would highly recommend the the front the whole front of the car and make sure you get your mirrors too yep. absolutely absolutely so I had all that set up and then uh, I actually got a phone call and it had a Fremont, California area code and I was like, huh, this is, <laughs> this is either going to be really good or this is going to be really bad. One of the two, right? And um, they, the, they had got the car transported earlier um, and I was able to pick it up eight days ahead of time. Oh, so nice. I was lucky, um, you know. The, you Normally get... that call is, hey, so uh, <laughs> yes. about that delivery day. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So I lucked out. It was great. Um, got it eight days early. The, the delivery appointment. Um, I was the only one. It was the last one of the day, so I didn't have to wait for multiple hours. He, uh, actually, the uh, delivery manager is the one who did my delivery, so I had really great uh, service. He was awesome. Knew everything about the car. Answered what few questions I had <laughs> after two and a half years of obsessively following the company. But well, that was the fun. That was the funny bit that I had too, because when I took delivery, uh, also at the same location. Um, <laughs> there wasn't really anything they could tell me about the car yep. that I didn't already know. Yes. yes, uh, yes. Now, granted, um, it was a little bit different with Model S having been out a much longer. Uh, so there was a lot more to kind of go on than, than with Model 3. But, yeah, I can appreciate that. Yep. <laughs> yep. And, yeah, so that was it. And then you drive away. Just like that. It is for a while there. Um, one of the big things I like to do is people who... You know, you always get that, that comment that like, oh, well, they're great for, car, electric cars are great for around town, but I could never take them on a road trip. Right, yeah. Uh, so my first, my first mission was to convert my family, right? Nice and easy. I know them. <laughs> Talk to them all the time. Uh, so I took, uh, within the first two weeks, I took my brother on a trip to Pittsburgh from Columbus. So it was about three hours each way. Uh, a few weeks after that, my dad and I spent a weekend. We drove out to St. Louis, which is much further about yes. eight hours i know that drive well actually yep and I have family out there too drove back from that and sure enough you know once you once you go through a drive like that and they see the uh the real key i think and this is this is my personal belief that the, the leg tesla has up on everybody is the charging infrastructure absolutely like no question yep and it's undersold I think a lot of new entrants, which I'm always excited to see new entrants mm -hmm. in the market. Rivian here. Uh, yeah, Rivian, which is awesome. I think even as somebody who doesn't have a use for a massive pickup truck. truck or anything like that, yeah. Um, very cool to see them enter into the market, and um, but they don't have charging. And one of the first things that if so, if I was in charge of, of their company, the first thing I would be doing is talking with. Tesla. As uh, we saw, Bollinger did reach out and say, "Hey, now we haven't heard anything about that yep. yet." But yep. I mean, they'd, it's they'd be crazy not to. Even if every single one of their customers has to pay for charging at the same rate, it's still it's they know it. no matter where they're going in the country, they're yep. going to have infrastructure to support them. And yeah, and with Tesla saying here recently that they're looking to double the the network again yep. by the end of next year, yep. you know, it really is. You know, I had someone talking to me the other day. Uh, I forget what what EV they were talking about, but they told me, they're like, well, you don't know where you're going to be able to charge. And I said, well, there actually is more infrastructure out there than you think, but it's just not as nearly as visible as the supercharger network is. Yep, yep. And not only as a Tesla owner, you get the supercharger network, but you can use all that other stuff too. And so that's, that's a massive, massive advantage for, for Tesla that I, it's going to literally take many years yep. for another company to overcome that. Yep. Or you sign some checks with Elon. Yep. All right. Well, hey, we're at our destination right now, so Nick and I are going to grab a bite to eat, and uh, we'll be back to talk some more in a bit. See you in a bit. All righty. Well, let's take this thing. Actually, uh, you already popped it in there. Yep. So let's uh... – actually, even the uh, – even the uh... 
Well, you got creep on. That, mm-hmm. That's not one. That's one thing. Don't turn it off. Used to. Yeah, actually, that might be a good idea. We we might run into an unintended accident uh, there. And maybe that's my. Uh, Are we good up here? Yeah. Yeah, we're good. Uh, maybe that's my uh, being used to a manual transmission car yeah. coming out in me. I assume we're just gonna go back right back out. Yep. Where we came from. So the first thing I notice is this steering wheel is smaller than smaller the Model thicker. S. Yep. Uh, I don't get the thickness bit as much. So we'll actually go up this way. Because yeah. we're gonna take the freeway back, so you can play around yeah. there if you want. We're gonna follow this guy to the left. Right. This this part's thicker. This uh this kind of the T spot there. Mm-hmm. I don't feel that up here. Maybe it is. I don't know. And it's got the different style turn signal. Yeah, which, that's a little bit getting used to too. But now I love it. Having it be I don't know digital is that what you call it instead of mechanical turn right. signal. But freaking love it. Well, actually Tesla. I don't know if Tesla is exclusive to this because I haven't driven a lot of high-end cars, but that kind of dual catch that, that Tesla has. Mm-hmm. That again. Interesting, like, tactile feedback experience when you don't have the, from the, uh, yeah. Yeah. from that, like, it was something that I was expecting and didn't get, and it's odd to not get it. When, well, something will be different for you is when you're on autopilot, when you want to indicate it, you click all the way down, and on your car, you have to cancel the turn signal, right? Once yes. Once you're over this you just indicate right, which it direction doesn't, and yeah. it'll shut off the turn signal once you've completed the lane change. That's for sure. So Alright folks, we're getting on the highway here and I'm going to put that Tesla grin on our faces as I get on the highway here. There's another Tesla right there. Yeah, there's which... Alright, let's go. Here we go. <laughs> it never gets old! <laughs> Both of the phones are gone. <laughs> Uh, this guy is in front of us here. Oh man, it really does never. I mean, it never gets old. It never gets old. In fact, I don't know how, if you're the same way about this, but I have. I've gotten used to. I've gotten used to the, the torque, the uh, instant acceleration, all that stuff. So you almost get to feel like the car is slowing down, but in reality, I don't know if that was all about. Yeah, that was weird. Um, the car's not slowing down, you're just getting used to it. Right. Right? So, what I have to do to keep myself in check is, when I'm at a stoplight, when I accelerate, look in the rearview mirror and see how far <laughs> back everybody is, and then you realize, like, what is now a normal acceleration for you is triple what anybody else is doing. Right. Getting, Nobody right? else on the road is getting yeah, this. And that's not even putting your foot into it. Well, and so the funny thing is, too, because this car is rated a second, and, uh, 1.1 seconds faster, from 0 to 60 than mine is. Yeah. And for me, I didn't catch the difference that, yeah, uh, my my moves very nicely. Never gets old. Yeah, the, the the Tesla grin. There's a reason that's a, that's a saying. And you have to experience it. I think that's the other thing, right? You see people in videos and you're like, mm-hmm. oh, that looks fast, but until you. Well, the other yourself. thing too is, I was rolling. That that's probably different from a dead stop. Yep. Uh, yep. And because that, that's one thing I have noticed, like, it still sits you back when you're moving, but. There is nothing like hitting that thing from a dead stop. Yep. And even with the winter tires that I have on right now, so you know, a little less grip, so you're right. not gonna do it. This might be more like 3.8 seconds, 0 to 63 point. Right, seven. and maybe that's the part of it too. But it's still... Because my, my puddle meter is calibrated fairly, <laughs> fairly well yeah. to, to my own car. Yep. All right, so, so we've been driving around here a little bit here. Uh, we talked about delivery. How about since you know what's it been like since you've had it now? I mean, wait all that time. You've had it three months. Is it's, it still everything you hoped it would be? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. It, it is. It is amazing how quickly you get used to it, and it just becomes normal, right? So, it becomes part of your life. You, you, you expect and get used to having a full battery when you leave the house, right? You. No longer care what gas prices are, which is an unintended my, benefit. Right? My never... wife the other day goes, "Hey, look, gas is under two dollars a yeah. gallon." I'm like, Whoa, "Okay, cool. okay." <laughs> like, right. I, it's like she was giddy, and I'm and I'm and I'm like, I never realized like how like that's a thing you pay attention Absolutely. to. Absolutely, and you, I think you do it, you do it subconsciously. 
right? So when you pass a gas station, you look at gas. Oh, should I for a fill up? I want you know, I've got a half a tank. Well, I better because it's under two bucks a gallon. So don't have to do that anymore, which is really cool. Um, oh, the other thing, as we're coming to a stop here, um, I cannot understate how important regen braking is. Well, yeah, you know, so I'm I mean, used to this, but uh, you know, I've not hit the brake yet, really. I mean, yeah, <laughs> I think it's it's one of those features that. You know, if you drive the cars, you're so used to it. But going back to a gas car, it, it just seems archaic. It, it seems not right. It's it's so weird. And actually, so there's one other time that you'll get that feeling, and that's if you do charge it full, and you don't get yes. your braking. Yes, yes, yes. It is the weirdest feeling in the world. Because when, all right, now that we're done with our, our jaunt around <laughs> there, that's where I screwed things up. Um, so yeah, we. Uh, Trying to remember where you left off. Where did you leave off? <laughs> so we, we were talking about the you know things that we really liked about the car. Um, you know that, that it's looking for excuses to go on road trips. Um, I've, I've done a lot with family, trying to show them that hey yeah you can go on road trips. You can do more than just go get groceries in an electric car. Um, showcasing the performance is always fun. Things like that. Uh, I think that would be the most uh, surprising thing for a lot of people is the performance yep. um you know my my dad when he was still alive uh long ago like he he is the one that showed me the the movie the who killed the electric car yeah uh which is and, and uh if he if he could be alive today to see me driving the tesla there would be such a smile so i had a 08 civic hybrid mm -hmm. and he thought that was the greatest thing ever oh, yeah. to be driving a true um, and he was a muscle car guy too. So be, to be driving a true electric and an electric that would have put to shame any car he ever owned would have blown his mind. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Absolutely. It's, uh, it just makes sense. Even in the winter, right? We were talking a little bit about some of the efficiency losses that you have with, with cold weather driving that you don't have to worry about if you're in California or Arizona, New Mexico, but even with that, it's, it's just better. It's just better. I will say, for anybody who's contemplating the Performance Model 3 now, um, especially if you're in a cold climate, two things is you are going to take a range hit. Don't let anybody tell you otherwise. You are going to take a range hit with those big 20-inch wheels, sticky summer tires. The other thing is you have to buy a set of winter wheels. Winter wheels, winter tires. Um, I'm a firm believer that having an extra set is the way to go. You just swap over once it starts to get cold, switch back to your uh, summer tires. It splits the wear up a little bit, right? So you're 50% on the, the winter tires, 50% on the summer tires. And um, you don't have to worry about stretching rubber on and off every single season. And so. the damaging the rim, oh, more yeah. chance of damaging the rims in the, in the process too. Yep, absolutely. So two things just to keep in mind uh, when you're making that decision. But I'm happy with what, what I went for sure. Yeah, I am. So things you would have to, as a, a driver of a non-Model 3 that you'd have to get used to, that that little bit of, let's give me a thought, look at that, um, that little bit of, like, the stuff that it does for you that you don't expect it to do for you, how about that, that's the best way I can put it. Yeah. maybe undersold part of autopilot that I think is, is awesome is because you have in effect an extra set of eyes looking 360 around the car right mm -hmm. is and you drive a lot so you can you'll probably uh, probably agree that you just you're I'm not as stressed after a 200 mile trip because you're not as hyper vigilant maybe as you would be when you, when you drive so you're doing all these micro checking micro checks right, right. checking my mirror checking over here checking over there making sure the speed's good and all that kind of stuff, which you, you still do, but knowing that the car is also watching around you is just, to me, an extra, it's an extra peace of mind. And I find that because of that, it's less stressful to drive, especially through traffic on the front. Autopilot way. in stop-and-go traffic is a godsend. Yep. It, it's, I can, like, to me, you know, the, the coolness of the car just driving itself notwithstanding, that might be my my biggest uh, 
the biggest part of autopilot that makes me super happy is the stop and go traffic because you know every you know every time I have a commute for the most part I'm running into exactly that and the car just does it and it's not me trying to having to manage the car yep. uh, to make that happen yep it is uh, it is awesome so certainly if anybody has a commute or you know through traffic where you're sitting there and stop and go the 5,000 for autopilot is that's worth its weight in gold it's telling me the yep. nav on autopilot is so about to end yep, as we're getting on the off ramp and we're ended I imagine but normal autopilot still continues. Just yeah, you just yeah. lose the, the nav on autopilot. I imagine in the future, you know, when when we're full self driving and you pull in, the car pulls you into your driveway and it does those three chimes and it says like you've arrived at your destination. Yeah. Yep. So, so let me ask you, as someone who drives a Model S every day, is used to the features and the layout of a Model S interior, what are your thoughts about? The missing binnacle in the front, everything smushed into the center screen. So, frankly, I had, that bit of it I haven't noticed. Like it's 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 been pretty natural to, to kick over to the to the center screen. I uh, I told you while we were eating lunch, you know, the other the true bit of buyer's remorse I have the you know payments and whatnot notwithstanding is actually this interior because I think this is just such a when Elon said that it'll be like a spaceship, it really is. Mm -hmm. It's so clean it's you know some people don't like the lack of stuff i think that's that's a plus by yep. without beyond a shadow of a doubt um i'm curious to see what happens when so i, I bought full, full self-driving um uh, you know you, you'll talk to 50 different people and you get 50 different answers for what the right thing to do is but um, i decided to do it up front um to save the I, i'm sure it's going to be at least a two thousand dollar option after the fact now Maybe I think more. they've said as much, actually. Yep. Um, but to, to get that guaranteed computer upgrade, yep. um, to see if that really has, what effect that has. You know, does it affect only autopilot processing? Does it affect anything here? I'd be curious to see what happens with that. Yeah, I'm kind of curious, too, to see what the distinction ends up being between enhanced autopilot and full self-driving. Yep. Because clearly, you know, nav on autopilot, that's that's a autopilot, an enhanced autopilot feature. Yep. Um, and apparently the smart summon that's coming also is enhanced autopilot really? it's not full self-driving from um, at least from my, what i've read so we'll see it's uh it might be one of those things that you look back three years from now and be like well i blew that money but here we go okay now we'll punch it yep <laughs> funny enough when i was coming through here to come to your place uh this van was next to me and like it was like a quarter of the way into the intersection when the light finally changed because uh, I was gonna jump out in front of him so I could get over because this lane ends and I was like I won't have any problem with that Whoa. <laughs> yep that's a lot better <laughs> there goes the phone again oh dang okay yeah that was, that was I found good. I found that speed I was missing <laughs> that was good 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 and again, the shock to me is when you look behind you to see how far back the cars are. Yeah. Going. It's not quite the punch of a P100D Model S. That one will no, punch, but one punches you in the gut. That's still better. So I'm trying to remember what the specs were. Insane was 3.5, wasn't it? It was, oh man, I don't know. It was low threes, I think. Yeah, for, somewhere in there. I mean, this is every bit the Insane, which is when, when they started talking about a Performance 3, so as not to eat into the Model S, <laughs> yeah. I had no delusions of grandeur that the Performance 3 would be approaching the Model S performance. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, that's, you want a performance, a, a value value performance car. Oh yeah, you can't uh, beat it. This is, you will be happy. You cannot beat it. So what'll be interesting is, there will be, I think it, most people will agree that there's gonna be an S and X upgrade of some sort, whether it's moving to 2170 cell, uh, cell packs, if it's an interior update, something is gonna happen. Maybe they're gonna make the base Model S 100 kilowatt pack and they're gonna make the bigger one 120, who knows. Um, but when that happens, I wonder if there's gonna be an option for a ludicrous mode in Model 3. If there's gonna be an upgrade, you know, you still pay 10 think, grand. I don't think there ever will be, personally. I think it's gonna be one of the ways they differentiate the lines, that if you want the top of the line performance, you're gonna buy an S and that's, that's how it's gonna go. 
write a big check. Yep. Alrighty. Well, I'd like to thank Nick for uh, hanging out with me today and showing me the, the Model 3 performance. Uh, it was pretty amazing. Uh, not that I didn't expect it to be. But before I go talking about how I think it's, it's the most important car since the Model T, I figure maybe I should actually drive it. So thanks again to Nick uh, for, for hanging out with me today. I'll have a few uh, closing thoughts on the way back home. So see you guys then. Take care. All right, back on the road. Again, I'd really, really love to thank Nick. Uh, I appreciate so much for him donating his afternoon to me and letting me drive his baby around uh, the streets of Columbus and, uh, and give, it a bit of a, uh, give it a bit of an exercise. How about that? So my thoughts that I said that I needed to drive one to confirm, real, you know, I didn't have any doubt that driving it would change my mind, uh, but really, Model 3 and what these these outlets are missing that I was referring to earlier is the most important car since Model T. So if you pay attention to inside EVs at all, you would know that Model 3, by the end of this year, probably will have outsold any EV ever for its lifetime. Um, I, it, it's going to be close. It, the Volt, it might not make it over the Volt possibly, the pen, but the end of quarter push might do it. We'll see. Uh, long story short, it took the Volt many years to sell as many cars as the Model 3 has in just, well, let's just practically say for a year because the ramp for Model 3 the cars that were sold between July of last year and December of last year, quite frankly, there weren't many. If you had a Model 3 in 2017, you owned a unicorn then. Um, now, as I pointed out on the way here, as this giant diesel semi goes by me, um, now I saw two Model 3s within a minute of each other on the way down here, um, in the parking lot of the restaurant that Nick and I ended up going to, uh, there was another white Model 3 in the restaurant, uh, or at the restaurant. So it's not a unicorn anymore. And in fact, I see more Model 3s than I see Model S's and X's. So the takeover is here. And to further, not to belabor the point, but Model 3 outsold any car in its class which is the mid-sized luxury class, not even gas-powered cars could compete with it. So there's that. And it managed to find its way into the top 10 of cars sold in the United States during certain months. I don't know if it was for overall. I don't think it was overall for the year. But in a couple months, I think I saw it at number five or something like that. Or it was in the top 10 for sure. And... For an electric car to do that, it has to speak to some people, a lot of people, even people that may not have been aware of it before um, way back when, when it was just a, a dream and just announced. So, and then let's just, you know, that, that's just all the, the fan points of it. Let's talk about how fun it is to drive and how, as you saw, you know, I at a stoplight, you punch it in... Uh, and the, the smile that's going to be on my face when I see it after I start editing this video and and just the, the sheer performance. And let's not sleep on it in the turns either. The, the car is much more nimble than the Model S is. Uh, if, I, if I have to pick a Model 3 versus a Model S, the only reason I would advise someone to go with a Model S is if you just need more room to haul things because... Seating space wise, Model 3 is going to be fine. Uh, the same five seats that you have in this Model S. Uh, but the catch is that trunk and the frunk are not nearly the size that you get in this Model S. Otherwise, for me, Model 3 is superior in every way. And that is what's causing this kind of revolution to, to catapult it into the top sales numbers in the United States course having four to five hundred thousand people waiting on it doesn't hurt matters and let's not let that be lost on anyone that 
no car in history has had a waiting line of four to 500,000 people waiting on it before it's ever even been launched. So there's that too. So kind of to sum things up, um, just my frustration with the, the kind of, I guess media in general, just not getting it. I mean, te- not that Tesla has not seen that elsewhere, but particularly automotive media whose job it should be to bring the best to, to light for everybody to see and Tesla getting really no love. You know, of course, uh, Motor Trend was happy to feature the Model 3 for their exclusive as the first drives, but let the awards come around and crickets from Motor Trend. So I, I don't understand how you can be so glowing over a car at that point, but when awards time comes around, it doesn't win. I think they even called it the most important car of this era uh, or something to that effect. I could be wrong on that, but um, but they had no shortage of, of praise for the car when they reviewed it, and, but it can't win. It cannot win the award. So that's, it, it's just odd. And yet Model S was a winner of car of the year at one point. How in the world is Model 3 not a car of the year anywhere? I've not seen it in any automotive publication uh, or outlet that it's been deemed, other than maybe an EV outlet, that EV-specific outlet. But that's like, I mean, that's taking candy from a baby, really, because there is zero doubt that Model 3 is, or any Tesla for that matter, is the best EV on the road period bar none it, it's only competition is coming from gas powered cars at this point and the sales numbers prove it uh in the ev world uh i believe for a few months for a while i don't know if this is still holding up because we're late in the year but for a few months model three on a monthly basis was outselling every other ev combined for the entire year. And that's saying a bit. Um, for sure, actually, it may, it might, that might not be true. I think it might have been um, for that month. Every EV combined for the month, maybe not for the year. Uh, but it was true that no single EV, I know this for a fact, no single EV had sold as many for the entire year uh, as Model 3 was selling per month. Uh, that's again, we're, we're late in the year, so that, that may have changed, but anyhow, unquestioned dominance in the EV market, um, head scratcher for why mainstream press, uh, automotive publications aren't picking it up. Anyway, enough of me ranting. I think you've heard enough of it. This has been a long episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you enjoyed the format of of Nick and I uh, just kind of hanging out and talking uh, all things Tesla. So uh, if you did enjoy that, uh, please, please, please hit that subscribe button. If you don't want to subscribe, fair enough, but at least hit that like button. I'd really appreciate it. Uh, If you're super into what I'm doing, I really, really am happy that you are. Uh, why don't you head on over to patreon.com slash Tesla tidbits. Uh, if you'd like to give a buck or two to the cause, uh, I would very much also appreciate that. Uh, as my, uh, uh, one of my favorite other podcasts out there, Core Killers likes to say, uh, we do, I do this on a, a value for value model. So if you feel like you, you get a buck a month out of, out of the content that I produce, whether that's this show or the flagship audio only show, uh, please feel free, go over, uh, kick a buck in. I'd love to have it. Uh, as they like to say, if you would buy me a beer at the bar once a month, buy me a beer. That'd be great. Uh, that's it. Uh, oh, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the super patrons out there that are supporting the show at the $10 plus level. They are going to get an extra special call out on cards at the end of the show here, uh, denoting the fact that they are supporting the show at the $10 plus level. And for that, I am again, very grateful. Autopilot. Um, <laughs> that's it for this show. Uh, thanks so much. And again, thanks again to Nick for, for letting me tool around in his car today. Uh, I am DJ Harbaugh. This has been Tidbits for the Road. And until I see you next time, keep it charged and hit the road.